Hello everybody, this is JD again. I'm standing in front of you, kind of upset. I, uh, last Sunday, run into this pro self-proclaimed state militia. There to protect us from the government when the government decides to take over. And I had the audacity to tell him he's nothing more than a coward. Oh, he took assault, and that ain't all I told him. I said, you guys do nothing but play Boy Scouts. You're nothing but Boy Scouts. And I should know because as a Scoutmaster, which I was for several years for an assistant, when you go camping with the boys, they all want to do one thing. Play war in the woods. What does the state militia, these militia people do? They all dress up in their camis, they get their guns, they get their packs, they get whatever, and they run into the woods and they play Boy Scouts. Because Boy Scouts play war games. Oh, but we're real using real guns. Yes, because <laughs> as a scoutmaster, I would not allow any of them to have a gun on a camping trip. Heck, most don't even know how to use a real gun. People don't realize guns only kill. The purpose of a gun is to kill. Ask any real hunter. He'll tell you. When he shoots at an animal, for a deer, let's say, or a bear for food or whatever, and he doesn't kill it, he says, that's a miss. I wounded him, but he got away. That's a miss. A kill is the only thing that counts as a hit. So guns have only one purpose, to kill. Understand that, that truth. Understand what this video is about. It's about you all being cowards. Whoa, wait a minute, that's a very strong word. Well, I'm giving you all a chance to stand up against the United States federal government and say, we the people We'll have a Congress that is there to serve only the people of the United States of America. Not the UN, not the special interest groups, not the rest of the world. Only to serve the will, the desire, the wants of the people. Our Constitution will be as it is written. Not the way we would like it to be written. We will not leave out parts we don't like or pass laws that go co completely contrary to our Constitution and ignore the Constitution. There are several laws right now that are worded exactly opposite of the Constitution. <laughs> Prayer in school. The very First Amendment says we can't pass any regulations or laws or judgments regarding the free exercise. Prayers in schools restrict the free exercise. How about the law about child being born in the United States who's both parents are legal aliens? Oh, he's got to leave. Wait a minute. The Constitution says at birth that child is an American citizen. Who gives the Congress the right to take away the privileges, the promises, and the rights of that individual child. Who gives Congress the right to take and ignore the Constitution on just those two incidences? I heard something about owning property and how this owning property thing, and truth is, in this country, nobody absolute owns property. No one. You and I, I got a house. I pay for it. But, eminent domain can take it any time it wants. That needs to be curbed. That needs to be restricted. True, what Trump says, without eminent domain, we wouldn't have highways, we wouldn't have piers, we wouldn't have Navigable waterways. We wouldn't have bridges crossing the waterways. <laughs> we wouldn't have airports. We wouldn't have parks. 
we wouldn't have schools but we don't need eminent domain to build a mall somewhere we don't need eminent domain to put a hotel somewhere we don't need eminent domain to build a structure now eminent domain can be used to take a neighborhood that is in full decline and develop it into a positive neighborhood of same type, sort, and manner. Not to take a neighborhood, tear it down, and decide this neighborhood was in decline and all the houses were condemned, so we're going to put in a mall. No, you put in a neighborhood, a place of decent living for people. At the same time, when you build those houses, you're going to do a lot more construction work, a lot more jobs, and that will give cheaper housing. Or it might even let the people who are in houses that were falling down around them have a new home that couldn't really afford it, who was struggling just to make ends meet. To serve you, the people, for you to get off your butts and get with me and tell Congress, no, tell the politicians you're sick and tired of their stories. Cruz, Trump, gosh, I haven't heard so many lies since, gosh, last presidential election. And the one before that, I knew who was lying because he copied everything that I said and claimed it as his own. Now, what do I'm talking about to you? Sanders? Is he listening to you, the people? He's giving you promises and the taxes. Hey, how would you like to be making $5,000 a week and after taxes, take home $25? That's what he's giving you. You get free reign on taxes from the federal government. You're going to get even freer reign on taxes from the state government. And boom. State governments. Why the heck do we have state governments? Well, I listened to somebody who was talking about the government, and he's hit on a key point. If we didn't have the Supreme Court to regulate everything between all the states, then each state would have its own particular type of governmental environment. Their communities would be particular to that state. Whoa! That's the way it's supposed to be, according to the Constitution. When you go living in California, for example, sure, we could have a common language for the land is English. All public schools will teach English. But you go to California, and they will have a second language, primary language, Spanish. You go to Texas, they might have Spanish. You go to Chinatown in New York. They might be the public schools teaching English and Mandolin. You see, English will be there, but each area will have their primary languages. That is an example of how the states need the state government. They need to be recognized. And yes, each and every state will be different. Do you think the people in Colorado are concerned about a mass transit system, let's say in Virginia Beach, or earthquakes in San Francisco? No, the people in Colorado are concerned with the needs of the state of Colorado. That's why they got representatives in Congress, both the House and the Senate. Now, in the Senate, they have two representatives, two, and only two. And they are to argue on the floor for those states. <laughs> Except for something that I find very interesting. Every time they have a presidential election, for some reason, these senators who said they're there to represent the state in the Senate seem to go off around the country talking to everybody and ignoring their job. They are derelict to their job completely. Oh, well, I, well, you're not on the floor discussing it. You're not there where you are paid to be. 
You are paid to represent the people of Texas, and you're saying, Freak you, Texas! I'm going for a better job that pays more. That's why I personally feel that no candidate running for president should be involved in Congress or the Senate for at least three years. And political parties, you don't even want to get me on that. Those are the biggest lobbyists that are running around in Congress. Don't call them anything else. That's what they are. I swear to you, any congressman or senator who would have the audacity to come into my office and introduce himself as a political party member will be thrown out on his or her butt. And I mean literally thrown out. I don't care about political parties. But you have that congressman or senator come in and say, I'm from this area, we are having problems. You got all my attention because those people are who I care about. But what can I do? I am giving every one of you on all my sites that stand there and post all the complaints you want about the government and do absolutely nothing. I'm giving every one of you a chance to get up and start being counted. Start meaning something. Don't spend 10, 20 years saying what's wrong with this country and nothing gets better. It only gets worse. <laughs> get it through this. It's not working what you're doing. Start looking for a way to make this fix. I can't do it alone. And you all seem to think that, hey, I'm nobody. Well, let me tell you a little clue. Until everyone jumped on the bandwagon behind Trump, he was nobody running for president. But boy, as soon as they all jumped on the bandwagon, he became somebody. He now has a Republican party of fear that he might get the Republican nominee. <coughs> <coughs> and he's so spoiled, and I mean spoiled, that he says, if I don't get the nominee, I'll run independent. I don't need the Republican Party. I can run independent. Well, I'm running independent because I don't believe in any political party. I believe in you. But unless you start believing in you, unless you start the action... Unless you decide to get out there and let them know what we are doing, what we are saying, and what we're after. Oh, what are we after? To fix our nation. To fix the problems within our nation. Congress doesn't listen to us. Congress doesn't hear us. The only thing you ever hear about Congress is when it's time for election, and then when they get back, they kind of like, well, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. No, they've been working on it too long. To fix our nation, we need first to get a president who is there with the people, not a political party. The judge. If I become president, I'm going to have to appoint that judge. If he don't tell me I believe in the Constitution as it is written, and it shall be enforced as it is written, not the way we like it, not these books written over here, hundreds of books, because let me tell you, there's one God, only one, and I can fill Congress to the top on books written about that one God. Most of them are some truth in there, but it's got a guy's opinion or a girl's opinion. It's got somebody's opinion. We don't need that with our Constitution. We got one sheet of paper. We need to start reading that sheet of paper and enforcing it as it is written. And that is the man I will nominate. Not liberal, not conservative, constitutionalist, a sole believer in the Constitution. The right of the federal government, the right of the states, the right of the people to be 
independent, yet joined together under a common cause. Us, the people, and the promises made in the preamble. That's what it's all about. That's what I'm about. And until you all realize what I'm saying, until you all realize, get off your butt and get out there. Start telling the world, I mean the whole world, about JD. Start pushing. We can't fix our nation. Those of you who don't vote, you're worse of all because you alone can control the election. Those of you who find all the problems that you complain about, I don't care what party you belong to, you are there just as much problem. And you can solve the problems, but only us together as one people. There's things in Fargo they are concerned about, but not the same things in St. Louis, not the same things in New Orleans, but they all need to be heard. There's things in San Francisco. But they're still not the same things in Los Angeles or San Diego. But those people need to be heard. There's people, there's things New England deals with. Each state. And then you got New York City. Then you got New Jersey. Then you got Mid Atlantic. And you got Florida. Different things they're all concerned about. But they are still one people, one nation. And they all need to be heard. Not the Republican Party with their party platform. Not the Democrat Party with their platform. No. These representatives need to become representatives of their people. So that our Congress can become a servant of the people of this nation. Hey, that's what the Constitution says. That's what I believe in. And the ten First Amendments, I call the Ten Commandments of the Constitution. They are the greatest fears our forefathers had. But the forefathers gave us a tool to correct all these problems. But none of you are using that tool to its fullest extent. You sit on your duff you complain about this. You go play Boy Scouts in the woods. You do whatever you want, but you do nothing. You're afraid to stand up to the federal government and say, No, I'm not voting for a Republican. No, I'm not voting for a Democrat. I'm voting for a statesman. Someone who doesn't believe in what garbage you are all putting out. Someone who believes in me. And through him, we together will fix our nation. Hey, that's what it's all about. But I can't do it alone. How many times have you heard me say that? I cannot do it alone. Without you, and without your effort, and without you getting out there, and without you doing what is needed, to free our nation from this political prison that we are locked in, there's nothing I can do. Hey, get together with me. I'm here in Virginia Beach, Monday through Friday at this store, Bob's Gifts and More. You can look it up, go Bob's Gifts and More store dot com. He'll give you the address. You can come right here, meet with me, talk with me. See if I'm real. JD is real. <clears throat> Hit me with the hardest questions you can. Hit me what matters to you. Because remember, my first promise is to bring your word to Washington, D.C. When you tell me what matters to you, I now know it. I can bring it. But when you sit there and you complain on how bad the government is and nothing else, I know nothing else. How can I bring your voice to Washington, D.C. when you are nothing more than a stale record 
of what everybody else is saying. You have to believe you matter more than anything else. Because the truth is, to our Constitution, to me, and what should be our Congress, though it is not, you are the most important part of our nation. Thank you for your time. I'm sorry I have to call you all cowards, but with you all sitting back there doing what you've been doing for years and not getting up to be counted, what else can you say? You've been doing it for years and years and years, and it's only getting worse and worse and worse. Hey, at least Hobbit Stein can't call you an idiot because it's not staying the same. You're doing the same thing over and over and over again. It's not staying the same. It's getting worse each time. It's getting bad and badder and the baddest and still more bad is to come. So, Einstein's definition of an idiot don't fit you because it doesn't stay the same. But it's not getting good. Together, we have to stop this decline of our country caused by our federal government serving political parties, serving foreign countries, serving foreign entities, serving the elite special interest groups, and ignoring the people in turn trying to enslave the people with higher taxes, higher programs that cost more taxes, expansion of government, Sanders is going to triple the size of government, I bet, in the least. Hillary's going to increase the size of government. Trump doesn't know what he's doing. Cruz is lying. Rubio, he's got a good heart. But he'll be another Obama. So what are we going to do? How are we going to fix things? Listen to me and say, oh, J.D.'s full of crap. J.D. don't know what he's talking about. Or you're going to say, whoa, we all better start getting behind J.D. And together, we all will, not can, will fix our nation. Thank you for your time. This is J.D. Have a nice day.